Hello people, this is rx 5 Gigan here today, trying not to roast to death in the British sunshine. Yes, we're actually having sunshine for once, this is not an alien concept, believe it or not, we do actually have a summer every now and again. Providing that someone upstairs gets their bladder sorted out, but no, I'm not here today talking about the weather. I am here to talk about this guy. The newest release in the SH Monster Arts line, the Monster Arts Godzilla 1964, or Mosu Goji as some people have referred to from the nickname of the suit. This is the newest release, it came out at the end of July in Japan, and to my understanding it was supposed to come out for you guys on the 25th of August, but just recently Amazon, from what I've read, made a stuff up of the listing and instead pushed it back to October. So let's just hope that's a mistake of some sort and it gets sorted. If not, then I'll be sure to provide a few links below, sorry, to places where you can buy this guy without having to wait that long. That is ridiculous. So, let's start this thing off with detail and as with all the figures that Yuji Sakai have sculpted in this line, uh, this is just absolutely wonderful. Hang on, let's get a little closer in on the head there. Mm. There we go. Look at that. The eye hoods have been captured absolutely flawlessly. Look at that. Got all the spikes running down there which have all been nicely sculpted. Now, I'm not so sure if these are actually made out of translucent material, because with the 94 Godzilla, its spines were basically translucent plastic, but then covered in some kind of clay substance, so I'm not sure if they've done the same thing here. And then you got the lower part of the body and the legs, which have been nicely sculpted. And then we got the upper chest and the arms. See, the hands are really well done. If you can see that. All the bumps and ridges are all there. When it comes to Godzilla's in this line, sculpt and detail wise, you definitely get your money's worth in that department. Oh, hang on, if I can just get this open. Ah, oh, actually open for me for once, yay! You can just see the inside of the mouth there. Got bonyish coloured teeth and a nice young tongue. And then last but not least, the tail. Got all the ridges here, all nicely captured, as well as all the muscle bumps. Oh, and um, also there's a tiny bit of detail at the bottom of the feet. They really spared no expense when it came to detail on this figure. It is all over the place, all over the place. Now, it's time to go on to probably the most controversial topic concerning this figure, at least. The articulation. When this figure was first announced back in February of this year at Wonderfest, if I believe, the Godzilla collecting fandom was just ablaze, because this marks as the first Soa figure in the SH Monster Arts line, and this basically made everyone go nuts when those first photos came out. But then, once the promotion pictures came out, people's opinions started to change. And it's all because, as you can see, some of the strange choices they went with concerning this figure compared to the other ones seen so far in the line. So, let's just cover off the basics first. Got the standard head articulation here, it can 
bob up and down like Churchill. It can rotate and then of course as you saw earlier the mouth can open and shut. There we go. There we go, it can go ooh, hang on, it can go up and down pretty nicely there. The neck has I fear one I'm not sure if that's two or three segments, but these can move, but the one here is pretty stiff. You know? There we go. It can just move slightly, that one. And then we come to the lower next segment, which can go up and down like that. So you can make him look down, just about. And then it can also go up. And you can just about make him look up. And then also it can do the basic swivel side to side, if it can. There we go. There we go, that's it. Then we come to the arms, which is basically pretty standard. They can go up and down. The bicep can go in and out, and side to side, like so. Same with the other arm. Although this one's a tiny bit more tougher to maneuver for some reason. I've always had this with my consoles. One side of the body would have perfectly fine articulation and the other side well you basically just gotta give a bit of a workout. There we go. And then comes the first controversial issue in regards to the articulation. This area. As you can see this area can move side to side like so. It can also just about go back and it can also go forward. But the problem with the way that they cut the sculpt here is that it has left this sort of gap. Oh. See? And if you even attempt to try and close that gap, it will pop out. Oh. See? So unfortunately with the articulation in this area, it is quite restricted. You can only move it so far before it pops out so you can't move it too much that way you can't move it too much that way and also you can't put it too forward or too back otherwise as you just saw it will come out which is rather disappointing then we get to the next controversial area of articulation on this figure these the triangle joints or the hip joints now as you may have seen in my unboxing video I messed around with, it, with these for just a little bit and yeah they do actually serve a purpose so obviously you got the standard leg articulation and surprisingly with this Godzilla compared to the other ones I have they actually work for me or in other words they move really easily which is great because usually I have one leg which will be just fine and the other one will be like trying to remove the sword from the bloody stone Ugh. yeah and now onto the triangle joints these can go in and out like so so with this if you if you're the kind of person like myself and who doesn't really mind this this means you can pull off all sorts of crazy poses with this thing like for example kung fu what are so you can pull off a sort of neutral pose with these legs, but you can also do a whole bunch of crazy stuff with them, like the flying splits. Whee! Okay. Now there's also a tiny bit of articulation in the foot down here. Another issue for some collectors. Now, I initially thought that the reason why they'd done this is because Compared to the Hesse Godzilla's, the Sura Godzilla suits had more movement and therefore I have initially thought they were trying to replicate that sort of more humanistic movement with this, this suit in particular by incorporating this joint. Unfortunately, it doesn't really move that much. I was rather hoping that if, it, if they were going to go with something like this, at least try and give it more movement like they do with the... Um, Ultraman in the Ultrack line, or even the uh, humanoid figures in the figure arts line, but it can only do so much as you can see. So, I mean, it's alright if you're doing stop motion with this thing, and if you want to try and get a complete 
foot going down like that maybe that might come in use but other than that it doesn't really do much and that's rather unfortunate now last in terms of articulation is the tail this hands down has the best articulation range of the entire figure seriously this beats the hell out of the other Godzilla figures in this line in terms of tail articulation look at this Look at that, look at that, and not a single joint is popping out, because as everyone knows, as everyone knows by now, one of the most problematic areas for some people with these figures are the tails, because they, in some segments, are looser than others, and therefore if you put too much pressure, they will pop out. But with this figure, I don't know what they've done, but it just works flawlessly. See, look at that. Look at that. You can't do that with the Hesse Godzillas. Look at that. Hmm? Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. I'm sorry, I had to do it. I had to do it. The tail articulation is just too good. It will allow you to do that pose, which is great. So, with articulation, it's a mixed bag. You've got some really good articulation like here and in the tail. But then also, you've got really bizarre choices like this. And of course this. Okay, hang on. And then the last segment of this review, size comparison. This is another low with some collectors and with this one I kind of agree and see where they're coming from because most of the Godzillas that Bandai have done have always been in the sixth scale. But with this guy you'll be quite surprised. Let me show you why. Here is the very first figure in the line, although this is the second edition of it. The SH Monster Arts 94 Godzilla, or Mogi Goji, I think it's called. And let's get a bit of closer there. Yeah. Wonder why they decided to literally shortcut on the sizing with this figure compared to the other ones in this line. It would it would have been really good if they did did it like this. But no, he's got to be all the way down here. So if you are really hoping for Mosu Goji to be the same size as the SH Monster Art figures, then forget it. It's not all doom and gloom, however, because while it kind of falls short, haha, of the Monster Arts line, this Godzilla does make a rather good companion for the Revlotex. Here is the Revlotex Anguirus 1968 from Destroyer Monsters. As you can see, they go really well together. Compared to this Godzilla, bringing back out once again, he just dwarfs this Anguirus. But with this one, you get a much better result. So if you are a scale fanatic, then you will find some comfort in the fact that your Revlotex won't be alone and they will actually have a Godzilla to hang out with, which I think is pretty neat. Because Revlotex were actually considering making a Godzilla, but unfortunately, Bandai owns all the rights to this guy, King Ghidorah, Mothra, and a couple of others. Despite the fact that there is a Monster Arts Mothra coming out eventually, not sure when, um, yeah, Revlotec could not touch Godzilla because Bandai had the rights to it, or the mainstream rights anyway. And on the line of Revlotec, this is actually pretty good. I mean, I'm not saying it's perfect. Of course, like with Angus, it is not dead on, no, but... It's close enough. You could get something out of this. I mean, it works. Or well, to me, at least. Ah, 
and then just for shits and giggles, just because, the Takubi Red Hosaurus model kit. This thing is amazing, and it dwarfs Godzilla. Nom 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 nom. That's for taking my crown. And so, there you have it with this figure. It, to me, it is a great figure. It really is. But as the definitive Mosu Goji figure, if you want something that's more closer to what was seen in the film, I don't think you're going to quite find what you're looking for in this. Some of the articulation choices and a bunch of um, other issues, like I don't know if you can see it, but this thing actually does have gaps. Here, here we go. See that? So yeah, so other than the articulation issues, and also the scale, as you just saw, I think you're slightly better off with the likes of either the Memorial Box um, figure, or, if you've got the money for it, one of the X-Plus figures. So, it is rather a shame that they did take some liberties with this figure, but honestly, I'm alright with that, but... If you want the most perfected Mosu Doji figure, then sadly this thing, it doesn't quite hit the mark exactly. And also, as, you, as I pointed out in my unboxing video, my one has uh, disproportioned eyes. Now, I don't know if this is due to paint or the way the translucent plastic went in, I don't know. But yeah... So again, while this is not as great as it could have been, and while I do like it, it certainly makes up for the previous release, which was that overhyped, and I'm guilty of that overhyping, I'm sorry, and that overpriced destroyer set. Jesus Christ. So yeah, this guy is out now. Um, I don't know if he's out for you guys in America yet. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Amazon's having some sort of screw up and, just, and the date's been pushed back to October. But if you really want this guy, Nippon Yasen, the place where I got mine from, still has him, I think. eBay still has him if you can put up with the exorbitant third party seller prices. And I think Big in Japan might still have some, I'm not sure. But compared to the Destroyer sets, this guy, considering all the faults and everything, it's actually a decent price, it's not bad considering it came with nothing, but again, I'm okay with that, I mean, this is still a pretty good figure on its own, but it doesn't really feel like a Mosu Goji, I mean, the head is fine and dandy, but I mean, Sekai Yuji did not miss around the head, but the way it's been cut up, it, I don't know, it just, to me, it just feels like a Soa Godzilla that never was. It's sort of like a hybrid between Mosu Goji and a Godzilla that never saw the light of day, I don't know, but... And that pretty much concludes my review. I hope you enjoy it, and if you'd like to see more, please leave a comment below. And don't hold back on constructive criticism, because I'm all up for trying to find ways to improve. Like, if you want me to get rid of the computer, for example, done. So yeah, hope you enjoy that, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.